right, guys, welcome back to the Wildflower Podcast. Happy New Year. It has been a while since we took a little bit of a break, but it's honestly been really nice. We were both able to create some space and really press in and ask the Lord to show us his heart for the podcast for this year, for 2023. So in this episode, we are going to share the podcast word for the year that the Lord has given each of us, scriptures that go along with it, as well as speaking into how we individually pray into the new year. So let's first talk about the word that the Lord gave Ashton. She'll kind of go through some of her stuff. And it's kind of cool because the Lord showed me something entirely different. And I feel like also indicative of like, our vibes and like personalities, but it's really cool how the Lord ties it together and how they correlate. God is just like cool like that. I always mm-hmm. think like if he can show me something, he can go show you something and then mm-hmm. it can kind of all be together. I think together. it's been so, cool too, because I feel like it's kind of just now all tied together in a really nice and unique way. I mean, mm-hmm. we knew that it was like cohesive, but kind of like how, and I feel like it's been several months that this has been coming into play. And so, you know, yeah. I had some stuff that was more for the podcast and then personal life but now that I've been praying into it more it really just all coincides with what God's doing in 2023 Um, and so yeah I mean I know that something that I always do every year is ask the Lord to give me a word for the year and this year I didn't even really ask it just happened yeah because you I feel like the Lord told you your personal word like early I did it was a few months ago November the Lord had really um, shown me what the word was for the year last year for me it was new Um, and there was a lot of new things that happened last Mm -hmm. year for me Um, when you go back and think about what God's done it's kind of crazy even though I wouldn't say 2022 was you know I don't even know like I mean it was fine that the Lord took us through each season but you know there was a lot of new things there was a lot of um, awesome things but a lot of hard things especially towards the end of the year and um, I think a lot of people felt that a lot of people like I felt it I mean a lot of people I came in contact with (laughs) felt such a heaviness and And just honestly honestly like we're all just trying to stay above water for the back half of 2022 Mm -hmm. I really felt that a lot and I think uh, you know something that Uh, Amanda and I always strive for is authenticity and I think that at the end of the year one of the reasons why we decided it was time to take a pause in the podcast was there's just a lot going on yeah and you know we definitely feel a responsibility to steward what God's given us and I certainly wasn't in a proper headspace for that um and I and I really wasn't either I think we were we were really both getting hit with a lot (laughs) a lot and I I remember we came together kind of around the same time and we were like man we just we need a break. We need a minute. A pause. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just like, as you guys know, like moms, you're a business owner. Like we just had a lot. And then when you take external scenarios to coming in, you go. And then the holidays. And then it was the just personal like, stuff. Wah! It was just like, we it were like, we need to just be <laughs> faithful with what the Lord's given us and take a moment and really strategize with what we want to come back with this year right. and share with you guys. So, you know, my it's personal cool. word of the year was, was travail. And if you're not if you're not sure what that word means, I didn't know what it meant. Yeah, when she, she first like, <laughs> told me, I said, "What is that? Tell me." <laughs> so I mean, it's a laborious effort. So when you think about travailing, you think about like in the Bible, it re- relates a lot of it to labor, you know. And it's a it's a hard laborious effort, and it doesn't sound fun. I was kind of like, okay, <laughs> I looked it up, and you know, I was like, what does this mean? But really, too, it's the heart of the Lord. It's it's intercession. It's praying. It's standing in the gap for marriages, families. Um, you know, whatever you're contending for, it's contending for the heart of God to fall on yeah, the earth. And I've really that. felt that so strongly. Um, and I've never really had a word like that so so deep to where it's like the Lord's really asking me to, you know, stay in a secret place. And I posted that scripture today that I think mm-hmm. I'll read right now yeah, because it so really good. goes along with travail. And yeah, and this again, this is my personal, this is my personal word, but we'll go into the podcast too. And it says, this is in Psalms 25, verse 14. It says, there's a private place reserved for the devoted lovers of Yahweh, where they sit near him and receive the revelation secrets of his promises. And so it was so cool because you reminded me of that this morning in my quiet time. Just like, you know, when you show up to pray and re- with your time with the Lord, like sometimes that's all that happens. You show yeah. up and he shares the secrets with his friends. And that's what's mm-hmm. so cool about the prophetic. So travail. You know, my goal this year is to just intercede for the heart of God to fall on the people, um, fall on his people and just for his spirit to come alive, for revival to happen, you know, Mm -hmm. and we're in, that's what we're entering into. So I felt that so strongly for me personally and for this podcast, you know, really being intentional about everything that comes out of my mouth Mm -hmm. and just wanting to see God's heart come through, you know, through me and through you and through 
everyone or anyone anyone I meet what we're doing here yeah and our family and so you know with the podcast I'd already felt for a long time even back in the fall you know we've come up with battle and bloom Amanda will talk a bit more about that about the book bloom and like she said we have different (laughs) ways we fight I feel like you know and and I feel like the way a lot of times the way the Lord shows me things is like in very pretty like pretty vibes just because like I'm I don't know more. I don't want to say feminine is not the right word because you're feminine. <laughs> I don't know what the word is. Well, but like, I you're intense. Some you're intense more, I feel energy. like I'm intense too, but like in a totally different way. Yeah. I'm, I don't know, but you're like, I feel like when I think about you, you're like a intense warrior. And so it like makes, it's no shock to me that like the Lord spoke to you about battling. Mm-hmm. And then with me, I'm like bloom into a flower. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it, it is really cool because I think that's important too. And I think that, you know, even from my process, you know, the Lord's talked to me a lot about seeing in color, but I think part of that is just a new perspective, even just being around women that do see more. And it's not that I feel like you see more in color, but the vibrancy and the possibilities of life, that there's so much to blooming and the color that comes from that. Yeah. And you know, it, it is a whole nother thing, but I started going into all the colors, what they mean. There's 12 tribes. There were 12 gemstones. There's all this stuff of color oh that gosh. we can do in another po- episode. <laughs> I won't get into that. But the whole point of that is even with the battle, like, I've found out with just the way I connect with the Lord and just what he's put in my heart is the ancient of days, like the ancient path, the narrow path. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why even battling you, whenever I see things, it's almost that gray grade or muted tone because mm-hmm. this goes back thousands yeah. of years. Right. And I feel like my heart is there. That's where I'm at. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, even though I'm living in society now, <laughs> I'm a functioning human. I'm, I'm in this culture. It's like my spirit is, is ancient because I have the ancient of days leading me every single day. Yeah. And I love that scripture. It talks about, you know, the narrow path versus the wide path. I was actually reading that a couple nights ago and it talks about, you know, the, to me, the world is like the Mm -hmm. wide path where it's like, you have all these options, your truth, your, all these things. Right. And it literally says in the Bible that leads to destruction and the narrow Mm -hmm. path, which is God's path. That is the only path. And that's what, I don't know what the back part of what that says, but it's like, um, you'll hear people reference the narrow path the narrow and that's path. just following Jesus. It's following Jesus. And I had a scripture about the ancient of days. Like it, so God's without a beginning and an end. So that's why it's called the ancient of days, right? He has no, like there's no beginning, there's no end. And it says, and, and this is in, where is this for? I think this is Isaiah. It says, yes. And from ancient days, I am he, no one can deliver out of my hand when I act who can reverse it. Uh, it's really cool. And then in Daniel, it says, as I looked, thrones were set in place and the ancient of days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair on his head was white like wool. His throne was was flaming with fire and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. And what's cool about that picture is it's just, this goes along with just the battle. Like mm-hmm. it, the Lord just spoke to me, the battles, the, you know, God's always been here and Mm -hmm. we have to like show up and always putting our armor on. So I felt really strongly about the battle and the battle is faced travailing intercession face down. These all, these all coincide, but God Mm -hmm. really showed me the battle portion of it studying the women of the Bible, studying how the Lord did it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just getting back to, you know, how you pursue God and how, you know, how you battle every single day. We're always fighting. And yeah. it's that fighting, that perseverance, that push that leads us mm-hmm. into the blooming That's right. that he has for us, the growth. In order to walk into, to bloom, and I'll kind of get into this in a little bit, but to bloom into where God's leading you and what God's called you to, you have to battle every single day. And it's like, we talked about this last season in the battle of the mind, where we talked about, you know, the, the spiritual warfare that goes on mm-hmm. and, and putting on your armor and all of that kind of stuff. But it's, it is a battle. We're in a spiritual battle every mm-hmm. single day. And it's like, if you give in to the lies of the enemy every day and you, and you allow anxiety to, mm-hmm. to continue to rule your life or insecurity or all of these mm-hmm. things to sort of steal your boldness and your confidence in who Jesus created you to be, you will never bloom into mm-hmm. where God's taking you or what he's calling you to. Well, and we think we have to bloom when we're put together or when everything on the outside seems, you know, put together. I can't tell you how many people ask me how to overcome circumstances, even on a daily basis. I talk to women all the time about mm-hmm. that. Like, okay, I know that a lot of people's hearts are, okay, I don't want my circumstances to bog me down. And the reality is, is we're human beings mm-hmm. fighting against our flesh, and our flesh, mm-hmm. you know, and subduing our flesh and allowing our spirit man to lead. And the only way your spirit man can to lead is if you feed it yeah. manna from heaven, right? So mm-hmm. that means getting in the word of God. It means spending right. time with the Lord. And, you know, he spoke to me a lot about 
how the battle coincided with the blooming because I mean I think a few weeks ago I said battle and bloom that can be our I, I love be that. our word for the year for the podcast battle mm-hmm. and bloom because you really came to the table with a lot of the bloom mm-hmm. and I had felt that but then the Lord really so sweetly tied it together today when I was telling I you that. to me of how it coincided because I was like Lord how can there be such an intensity with battling mm-hmm. and the wilderness and then the beauty of blooming but isn't that indicative of women <laughs> Yes. Think of it. Women are these feminine, beautiful creatures, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but yet there's an intensity. Women, I mean, we talk, you know, Mm -hmm. are incredible. All the things you battle and juggle and balance and, Mm -hmm. you know, men can't do that. No. I mean, I love men. I'm, I'm not a feminist. I'm not any of that. But like, we need men. We need yeah, men to be men yeah. and women to be women. Yeah. But there is an intensity to women that exists and a femininity as well. There is. And I think that that's so cool about the Bible is when you go read about women, like the different women of the Bible, you brought that up. Mm-hmm. Women in general, none of them were weak. No. And <laughs> they were all strong and they had their strength in their own right. And, the, and God cultivated that. And they yeah. allowed the Lord to do that. You know, Deborah was a warrior. She was ahead of men, right? Mm-hmm. People don't hear about that a lot. And, you know, she led men because the men, the men didn't stand up for it. And then you have Queen someone Esther, like Esther yeah. who, you know, led with courage and grace. So there's so many women in the Bible that if you took the time to study it, to go, okay, meekness is humility. Yeah. And they all operated in humility. I used mm-hmm. to think, and I've talked about this before, I used to think meekness is weakness. Yeah. It's not. It's not. The God's taught me so much about submission, so much about his heart for women and for just our role in society and our role as wives, as yeah. friends, as daughters. And, you know, the Lord showed me a really cool picture that I told you about with me. You know, I saw armor. I saw women in armor. And then I saw a completely desolate, barren place and mm-hmm. all of this there was just it was like muted gray yeah black white just a very muted color and um as I spoke about before I, I do think that was indicative of just the ancient path the ancient of days mm-hmm. um just the you just God's heart from yeah. the beginning to end and in that desolation I saw one flower that was beautiful it was pink and you know look at my nails Listen, I hate my pink. I'm not, not a, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like for the Lord's been speaking to me about fuchsia and pink and all this, this stuff. Who I don't, is she guys? All, I don't wear pink. I mean, I'm kind of wearing pink, but this is more purple. So I'll wear colors like this, but <laughs> I have been blown away with just God's ability to show me I his heart it. and this specific flower. I think this is all why it's coincided. So I got my nails pink about a week ago. And when the Lord showed me this <laughs> beautiful pink flower, it was so vibrant in this desolate, desolate place. And I'm going, there were no flowers around it anywhere. Mm-hmm. And at first I didn't understand. It. I'm like, is that, what is that? You know? And the Lord took me to Isaiah 35, I believe. And you this guys. just blew me away. She just read I this just to me right this. before we started <laughs> recording. It's so cool. So that the rose I saw, it's identical. And I didn't even get to show you this picture. Wow. That's what I saw. Hmm. And I didn't know that it was called the rose of the Sharon f- flower. It was a scripture. And I was just shook by it. So shook shooketh. by it. Shooketh. I say, I say shooketh. shooketh. And so, <laughs> you know, flowers are symbolic of, you know, I... Christ, they're symbolic of, they're a feminine type of thing too. And I'm trying to find the scripture. She's told me to like save my scriptures. I just read I it to you. Where is it? You guys, because look, I was like, I've <laughs> got to get organized. She's so much more organized than I'm me. I'm going to get organized with these podcast things. So I started, I said, do you want me to add any of your scriptures I said, into no, our I'm outline? <laughs> I said, no, nah, I'm good. And here I am. Here it is. Okay, found it. <laughs> it says, all right. So the Lord blew me away with this because this is to me everything. It tied everything together mm-hmm. and he did it right in the nick of time. So cool. And it says the desert will blossom like a rose and rejoice. Every dry and barren place will burst forth with abundant blossoms, dancing and spinning with delight. And that's the flower that I saw. And he just said, Ashton, you know, you see yourself in your full armor because that's how we have to clothe ourselves every day. We mm-hmm. have to be ready to battle. We have to be ready to fight. We're in the wilderness. I'm not sure if we'll ever get out of the wilderness. We can talk about that later. Uh, but I'm not sure that that's a bad thing. But that flower... It's so cool because it says those barren places, when you give Christ the opportunity to like shift you and change you and mold you, that's when the barren places are birthed. Like, so something, it's like, why is there beautiful this, can come something out of beautiful this can come place. out of this dead place? And often we try to get out of the dead place mm-hmm. to find the beauty, but the beauty is found in the dead place that's right. because Christ is the only way that there's true, mm-hmm. authentic, radiant light That's and right. beauty. And so that flower was so cool because I was like battle and bloom. Like the blooming happens and the in the 
desert. It yeah. happens in the wilderness and That's it happens right. in under pressure, think, under pressure. Exactly. And that was cool. I also, I think the, you know, the Lord's just shifted pers- my perspective so much over the years of going. Yeah. Instead of trying to get out of the place, like a lot of times, like when you're just in his presence, it's, mm-hmm. it's him that shifts your focus. So really your circumstances can be the exact same hard thing that mm-hmm. you're facing, but it feels totally different. Peace can exist and joy Mm -hmm. and all of this stuff can exist even when you're in a hard season. So Mm -hmm. instead of trying to escape it, just rather shift your focus on what you're looking at and allow the Lord to bring. Yeah. That beauty. Cause it says that that rose symbolizes a type of crisis. It shows like Christ can make the desert place refuge. So we can't make the desert, the wilderness, that needs to be like the scripture for the year. It really does. I was shocked. It ties it all together. It was so beautiful because it's like only like God it's in, it's in his timing, but that's where the beauty is. Mm -hmm. And we can't make it happen. So we're in this desert desert place and I mean like to lie to you and think you know it's never going to be different Mm -hmm. you have to get out of it to make to make to feel like you have your stuff put together you Mm -hmm. know and it's really like going God show me the beauty in this moment where is the fruit where is it and it's like he brings life to the dry bones which you had on your stuff you can read about it yeah when I started praying into this podcast for 2023 I always for myself same thing like I'm always asking the Lord for a word for the year and I used to be more into like setting goals and I think goals and stuff are important but this year, you know, the last couple years, I would say it's more of just been like, God, what's your heart for this year? Like, rather than focusing on material or monetary goals or things like that. I mean, that's all important, but I just have been like, just give me vision. Like what's, what is your thing? So the Lord gave me a personal word. Um, and I, I don't even know that that's worth sharing, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing profound. I think, okay. I think it is worth sharing because I think it ties into just, um, I think it ties into everything. Okay. I do because I mean, it, it, I know you, I mean, I did laugh because I was like, that's all he said. You know what's you know, so funny but it's, is it's every pr- time, because last year, you know, I had a more elaborate word and <laughs> this year as I started praying into it, I just, <laughs> I just felt yes. And I was like, huh, surely not. So then I, I continued not. to pray into I it. And it. every time I asked the Lord for my personal word, it's just yes. And actually mm. a friend told me the other day when we were speaking about the narrow path and stuff, she was telling me about this I think it was Joyce Meyer like sermon or something talking about the narrow path. And on the other side of the narrow path is your, is the yes and amen. Mm, and I thought that was so good. interesting tying in with the word yes of just like whatever it is. Like, I don't know. I, you know, he's got my yes. Okay. So I did have a friend. I have, this is what I meant to send you last night. I have to do it here because it says like, he was talking about how, listen, crazy. And I was just reminded about it. He was talking about like who will open the ancient wells of revival and reformation by obeying my word, not man's opinion, not wisdom. Those who are willing to be misunderstood and rejected by the old wineskin system will do great and mighty things. Just sit back and watch what I will do with your mm. yes. So that was another um, that. close friend of mine that was just talking about what the Lord shared with him. And I that's was like, cool. I've got to share that with Amanda who just got yes. <laughs> yes. You know, uh, <laughs> all and, caps. Yeah, but that's so I think it's so prophetic for you, too, because if God's asking you to do something when you're obedient. Mm -hmm. everything changes. That's right. Even if it feels like you're an insane person, like listen to me talking about living in color and all this stuff. I mean, you know, know. like it's like God honors your yes. Mm -hmm. That's biblical. Yeah. I love it. So for me, for the podcast, the first scripture the Lord took me to and praying for this was the Valley of dry bones. And I'm going to read it for you guys. It's a little bit long, but let's, you know, dive into it. Let's just like pour to have tons of scripture today. But, um, so the Valley of dry bones is in Ezekiel 37, one through 14. And I just think this is so cool. So it says, the Lord took hold of me and I was carried away by the spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? O sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is the sovereign Um, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm going to put breath in you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones. The skin formed to cover their bodies and they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic 
prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, for the four, from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and the breath came into their bodies. They all came to lit to life and stood up to their feet, a great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become old dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise up again. I love the rise up again. And that correlates with mm -hmm. something else too. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O oh, my people, you will know that I am Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord have spoken and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. And I just feel like it's so cool. Like coming out of 2022, like we just talked about, there was such a heaviness. There was such an element of feeling dry, dead on the inside, all of this stuff. And I felt that from so many people. And I just feel like the Lord is saying, like, I'm breathing new life mm -hmm. into you and into your bones and into these things, like into this new year. Like mm -hmm. don't take the stuff from 2022 and carry the weight of that into 2023. I think allow the Lord to come in and it goes along with something else I'll share in a second mm -hmm. too, of letting him come in and breathe new life on what he's doing this year. And it's so cool. And, and I, prophesying, calling forth. He says, yeah. you prophesy, you prophesy what you speak to it. You know, you yeah, speak to the, right. the barren places, the dark places The you know, it, what's so cool about God is I love hearing scripture because every time I hear it, he always reveals a new thing. And you know, mm -hmm. what's funny is I didn't correlate this till now, but you reading about putting the flesh on the bones, you know, I mean, it's all about being spiritually dead and going to spirit, being spiritually yeah. alive. It's putting God's heart, yeah. his, um, his desires in you. Like, I mean, he's literally building up his army. The only way you build up an army is to, you have to go from spiritually dead to spiritually alive. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? And it goes along with that scripture. I literally read before in his yeah. and And this is something, this is what the color pink sim symbolizes too. And so I really believe this is, part of our word for the year battle and bloom going from taking the dead places and making them spiritually alive. Yeah. And so in Ezekiel eleven fourteen it says, I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove them, remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh that goes from being spiritually dead to spiritually alive. And that's what pink, that color pink mm. talks about replacing your heart of stone with a heart of flesh. And it's really yeah. interesting because pink is so vibrant. Mm -hmm. Fuchsia is like, it goes along with pink, but just hearing even that scripture, it's just showing like that, even that pink flower I saw, the Sharon mm -hmm. flower, it all correlates to going from spiritually dead to spiritually alive, taking back ground that the enemy that's right. took from you. And that doesn't mean that it's going to be, Physic like physical manifestations no. of that. But like when you're taking back spiritual ground, that heals your heart yeah. and it and it changes you mm -hmm. in a way that you don't know that you can actually live and be alive. That's right. And fully alive, even when nothing around you looks like it. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. But that's like the joy of the Lord. That's, that's right. like having be becoming spiritually alive. And so it's really cool because even listening to that, I'm going, you just visualize this army being raised up. Mm -hmm. And it's and it says and it's that. with our yes, that yes. You rise up and it was a great army. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so that's what women are. We're ba we battle, mm -hmm. we war, and that and if we all say yes mm -hmm. to the Lord, yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. How, it says a thousand. It says one can put a thousand to a flight, but two can put two, ten thousand. You know, and it's important that we unify in that. That's right. So that was cool because I, I was that. just hearing more into it. It's really yeah. cool to listen to. It's really cool. So I want to read you the definition of bloom mm -hmm. um, because as I was like, so the Lord showed me the word bloom. Okay. So first it was like the dry, you know, Valley of dry bones. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. cool. You know, and then I heard bloom. Okay. So the definition of bloom is to open, to come into a flower, to bear flowers, which I also think bearing fruit, um, like in a spiritual sense, blossom, flourish and grow to be in a healthy, glowing and flourishing condition. And the Lord highlighted healthy a lot to me. Um, just because I think that as we're walking into a new year, I'll read to you what the Lord put on my heart in a second, but I just feel like the health of our mm -hmm. hearts and our internal being, obviously not physically, but like going, okay, I'm going to have to like do the work to mm -hmm. get healthy internally, to be able to 
start taking ground and, and stuff like that. So I just feel like the health thing was like really profound. Um, but I'll read you what I wrote about the podcast, what I felt like the Lord kind of put on my heart. I wrote, you have to plant before you can bloom. I feel like 2022 was a year of planting and now 2023 is a year to bloom. It's a year to rise up, to grow, glow and flourish, which is the definition of bloom. Mm -hmm. It's time to bear flowers, AKA fruit and to be in a healthy condition. Healthy was really highlighted to me. Um, And you have to be healthy in order to grow in the Lord and in life. Um, You have to be healthy in order to glow, which is, so we're going back to the definition of bloom, but I think it's so cool because if you think of these words, how do we glow, right? It's to have the light of God shining in and through you um, and to flourish, which is moving with ease because of the presence of God. It doesn't mean that our circumstances aren't hard, but we're flourishing because we have the presence of God wrapped around us, right? Um, health stems from freedom and the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is there's freedom and I feel bloom is a call to, and a charge to rise up right where you are to settle in plant deep roots the fair weather is gone the wishy-washy is gone like I think you have to make a choice mm-hmm. you know to to do the work right um, mm-hmm. it's time to plant so you can bloom step one is to get healthy to go to the places necessary to get healthy so you can produce a harvest allow the Lord to garden your Life and heart allow him to prune the areas that need to be trimmed back and pulled all together. Don't walk into 2023 with things still eating your crops, killing your harvest, and keeping you from moving forward in the call of God that he's put on your life. Allow the Lord to fertilize every area of your life, to sow good seed in good soil so the beauty that he put in you before you were even born can actually see the light of day. My prayer is that you will come out of hiding. There will be no more insecurity or feelings of inadequacy inadequacies but that you would find your true identity in Christ and walk with a new confidence and boldness you never knew existed not because of you but because of the Holy Spirit working in and through you strong roots and a firm foundation the time has come the day of singing has come the time to dance has come it's time to let your light shine let your joy overflow it's time to grow rise up and flourish in the name of Jesus it's time to bloom and it's cool yeah and um I don't know. That was just kind of like the thing the Lord put on my heart was like, go to battle. And mm-hmm. then you said battle. I'm like, go to battle every day. Mm-hmm. Get healthy. Get your heart right. Like yeah. start warring for yourself so that you can go to the places you where God's calling you. to fight. Like there's no rest for the weary. <laughs> I think people think you when you become a Christian, we've talked about this, that it's, oh, it's going to be easy and God's going to fix everything. It's actually the opposite, right? We have to war and battle for our families, for our inheritance, for you know, and it's not easy. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for me, it's like, you know, even thinking into this, like, it's like one day it's like being obedient. Like that changes everything. Like, I think you said something. I want to have this. Sorry. I want to read this because there's something you said that I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. You said settle in plant deep roots. The fair weather is gone. Okay. So planting deep roots, that that means you have to put in the work. Like you said, you have to show up. You have to, that's something that the Lord's really put on my heart is just show up. Mm -hmm. All you have to do, Ashton, is show up. And that means be present, be ready, be ever Mm -hmm. always alert, you know? And, and when you look at people think you get, you know, we always look at other people and think, how do they get to where they get got right? We don't know everyone's story, but deep roots, they come with a price. Mm -hmm. They come with your life. So I think, you know, and the settling in, in that mm -hmm. I think is important because I think so often we can look around and look at other people's lives and go, uh, or, or just even our own lives. Maybe we're not where we want to be in certain scenarios. And it's like, no, settle in. Mm-hmm. You know, the whole thing, bloom where you're planted. Like settle mm-hmm. in to where God has you today mm-hmm. and plant roots there. Start planting those deep spiritual roots, right? Quit wishing that you're somewhere else, mm-hmm. that you're further along, mm-hmm. you know? And just like you said, do the work and then you'll get there. And we'll talk more about stewardship because that goes really hand in hand with the stu- stewarding where God has you at, mm-hmm. right then and there. Yeah. Not every season is the same. Um, he asks you to do different things different in different seasons. And right. that's what walking in humility and obedience truly is. And that's the key. I've told so many people, what's the key? Humility. Yeah. That is the key factor in honestly every decision we make and, and showing up and consistency and when you don't want to. And I'm telling mm-hmm. you, I've chosen that. I've chosen times where I'm like, I don't want to show up. I'm tired. And I choose the other things. I choose more sleep. <laughs> I choose I choose numbing music or I choose numbing shows. I, I mean, just being honest, like it's like, OK, mm-hmm. you pick like but. What's wild is the enemy just tries to keep you from getting into that freedom, right? right? And with things that are empty. Mm -hmm. And there was this really cool clip of a guy I saw where it talks about how the enemy and God sound similar. 
Yeah. And when I started to think about the counterfeit, like God always has a promise and then the enemy comes with a sly counterfeit mm-hmm. that's just a hair off, Yeah, you know? And I think we think, okay, so we choose the enemy's way or the, the um, wide path for, right. for a time, right? Which we talked about. We choose mm-hmm. that and it seems fulfilling. It seems like satisfying, right? Because it's like, okay, if I just fill this with, I could use an example of, you know, if you want to get pregnant, you can't get pregnant. Like I could have said, oh, I'm going to, you know, continue to worry about this or, you know, I ha- got the baby and didn't work on my heart. Right. That's just getting something temporary, fulfilling myself right. and going off my life, which is what the enemy does is the mm-hmm. counterfeit. But then with the Lord, cause it makes you just believe that that thing will fix the long yeah, game. Or, but like, it and doesn't. that's the enemy. It's like, Oh, if I drink or if I do this, all these things mm-hmm. that make you numb and f- like just fix where you are currently the pain or whatever mm-hmm. it is that en- that leads to destruction. Right. It seems like it's not, mm-hmm. and it seems like you're not having fun, but then the Lord, it's like, you have these little deaths every day, right? And it seems like you're just going to stay dead, mm-hmm. but then it leads to life. That's right. You know, and, and it's it's what's crazy is the enemy just lies to you and makes you think these things are going to fix it. God's not going to fix it because look at your life. Look at your circumstances. Right. Look at whatever. Instead, the gospel is going, no, you lose your life. That's so right. to have plant planted deep roots, it requires your life. It mm-hmm. costs you, you, yeah. your time, you know, and you can't see it in the beginning because over the process. So don't rush the process. Yeah. I feel like that was a word for a lot of people last year and this year is don't want rush your process, but let God use his own time on you and mm-hmm. show up. Yeah. Pray every day. It That's says right. pray every day. This is the inner is courts of Thanksgiving, you know, and I, I've seen firsthand the fruit in that. And I've seen mm-hmm. firsthand the fruit in my choices of not choosing the Lord and choosing. Yeah. And it's wild how mm-hmm. different it feels. Yeah health versus not, not health, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it's like, it's like with anything we all know, it's like the little things daily are Mm -hmm. what compound to the ultimate result. Right. And so whatever that is that you're desiring, is it to, you know, know the Lord's voice more intimacy with the Lord or whatever, or Mm -hmm. getting healthy, right. You know, you show up to the gym one time, like you're not going to be you're not going to lose a bunch of weight, right? Mm-hmm. But you've got to show up regularly and do And it's no different with the Lord. You want intimacy with the Lord, you've got to show up. Mm-hmm. And we talked about physical stamina. We've talked about that. I think the culture we live in has thwarted it so much because we're so, we're now a culture of instant gratification yeah. that I've never before, even in fitness, seen people want to have these results that are non-existent. I'm like, okay, if you show up one day or you stuff your face full of whatever, don't expect to lose weight or to stay in shape. And that's just me yeah. being blatant I'm going guys like we have to put in the work people don't get where they're going because they don't they just show up and it happens yeah and I think we're in a culture that's kind of almost created that mentality Mm -hmm. of like that just happened for her that just happened for him and sometimes it does you might get lucky yeah but that's not the point that's not the gospel right that's right you know and um I think it's gonna be cool battle and bloom we have a lot of um awesome things in the works mm-hmm. just to have other people yes. join us this year. That's something that's been put on our hearts yes. to have some guests. And so mm-hmm. we've kind of got a list of some people that the Lord's mm-hmm. highlighted to us and I'm excited for that. It's going to be great. That'll be so fun. Cause it's like, you know, we have our dynamic, but adding a third person and just giving like other women that have mm-hmm. such a cool insight and it just brings a different dynamic. Yeah. And we felt like this is the year to go for that. Um, but yeah, our year, our word for the pocket is battle and bloom. So we'll see what God really does cool. with that and how it grows. And what's cool about blooming is it gives gives us a huge runway of growth. That's right. Of where God can take this and mm-hmm. what we feel like he's leading for us, like leading us to do for you guys. So I'm excited. I am too. Um, did you want to share anything else? Or do um, you have any other scripture? Oh, I wanted you to share that. Um, was it the one I sent to okay. you last night or was Sh- it the one about, the, I don't know. I, I know, so many I know we are kind of like wrapping up, but I just want to make sure we get all of mm-hmm. like the thing in here. Um, well, the Hosea one I thought was really yes, good. Yes, I sent that one. Let me read that. I have it right here if you oh, want. You did it. perfect. I sent that last night, actually. She sent this in our like group text last night, and I was like, "Oh, that's so good." It oh, goes yeah. along with what I was like. Felt like the Lord put in my heart about like you know tilling your heart. Yeah, so it ahead. says Hosea. It's Hosea ten twelve. It says, "Plant the good seeds of righteousness, and you will reap a crop of my love," which is what you said. Plow the hard ground of your hearts, for now is the time to seek the Lord, that He may come and shower salvation upon you. I mean, that's the season we're going into, and so my heart of travailing, interceding, is that the Lord just reigns salvation mm-hmm. on people and we we forget too this isn't just for us right so this isn't no. we're not just blooming for us to come into fruition it's for us to share the good news it's for us to teach other people about the lord yeah. and it's like so i think things gets, the lord has shown us we want you to bloom and where god's calling you oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but in turn for you to also 
teach other people. Yeah. So, you know, God was talking to me about that. It's like, you know, we get so focused on our own circumstances and our own process that it's like everything that the Lord downloads in wisdom and knowledge and in revelation is to share with people That's right. so that they can come to know the truth of what God's doing. And so this is exactly what he's doing, right? He's planting it in, in all of our hearts. And so that we'll reap his love that then we can shower what he's doing on other people. And that's what mm. revival is. Yeah. And that's what God's doing. And that's what travailing is, is Rainbow praying for the heart. Nights. Yeah. And so I love that. It was actually funny. I can't believe you hadn't read that yet with all the, I mean, I'm surprised. I've actually read in Hosea quite a bit over the last yeah. handful of months, but like I'd never like, it's, it's and maybe it was a different translation or something. Cause it was cool it how you sent that. And I was like, Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, you plant and you reap a harvest. If you go and read about the crops that were planted on the shallow ground, the, the, um, the deep rooted ones, mm-hmm. I mean the deep rooted, that's that scripture. Is it Matthew or Mark? I can't I remember, know. but it's oh. really cool. It talks about, I don't know them growing and the seeds being sown. I feel like that's Matthew. I think it's Matthew. It's Pretty really sure. cool because it talks about exactly what we're in it all. Mm-hmm. It's so cool because it says, you know, the word of God is alive and powerful. Every time I hear scripture, I hear something different. And that's mm-hmm. what happens when you're spiritually alive. That's right. You hear God's voice. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and there was something oh, about aroma. You, okay. Fragrance. Okay. Well, find that. I'm going to read this, this other thing. <laughs> and then also you shared with that me when we had today. our meeting last week, you shared about um, song of songs eight. Yes. I don't know if you want to share that, but I'm going to read. So yeah, I do. So I, when the Lord was showing me bloom, I heard, I went to songs of song of songs two ten through 15. So I'm going to read it and like, think about how it correlates with what I felt like the Lord was like downloading to me what I wrote out. And I just think this is so cool. So I'll stop along the way and like share my like two cents, but it says the one I love calls to me, arise my dearest, hurry my darling, come away with me. I have come as you have asked to draw you into my heart and lead you out. For now is the time, my beautiful one. The season has changed, which I think is so cool because even in literal senses, like the season is changing. It says the bondage of your barren winter has ended. And we've been talking about barren seasons and places like in the dry bones and all that. Well, here we are coming out of winter, headed into spring. And I think it's cool. It says the bondage of your barren winter has ended and the season of hiding is over and gone the rain has come has soaked the earth and left it bright with blossoming flowers the season for singing and pruning the vines has arrived i hear the cooing of doves in our land filling the air with songs to awaken you and guide you forth can you not discern this new day of destiny breaking forth around you the early signs of my purposes and plans are bursting forth the budding vines of new life are now blooming everywhere the fragrance of their flowers, fragrance, mm. uh, whispers, there's change in the air. And I just feel like there's change. The Lord's mm-hmm. doing something new. It's so cool. Arise, my love, my beautiful companion, and run with me to the higher place. For now is the time to arise, which in the Valley of Dry Bones, it says rise up. Yeah, and in this, it's up. arise, like, come, like go with the Lord, right? Come away with me, for you are my dove, hidden in the split rock, open rock, in the secret stairway of the sky. Let me see your radiant face and hear your sweet voice. How beautiful your eyes of worship and lovely your voice in prayer. You must catch the troubling foxes, those sly little foxes that hinder our relationship and that ruin what I've planted in you. Will you catch them and remove them from me? We will do it together. So you're partnering with the Lord and you're ridding yourself Mm -hmm. of the things. You're allowing him to rid yourself of the things that are ruining what he has planted in you, what he's Mm -hmm. calling you to do. And so do it. That's so cool. I mean, I could talk for hours about all the things. I'm like, oh, I'm remembering this and this and that. And what the Lord's done, we'd be here for five days if we keep talking about all these things that God's like done and put into our hearts. It's such a download. It is such a download. This is the other one. um, Okay, thank you. You don't have to read it, but if you like felt like you. Yeah, I wish I would have read this in the beginning, but I'll read some of it because this goes on with my travail word. What's cool how God is tied into so many things for this year, bloom, battle, fragrance, aroma, like it, it's I'm hyped. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, you feel, the, like Lord, you feel the spirit of the Lord here <laughs> because, you know, I had written the other day, you know, our yes, which is funny um, to the, in the wilderness swifts are it shifts our fragrance. Jesus is the flower. Um, like Jesus is what I was picking in that picture. Like mm. I was picking up his fragrance, his, his characteristics, his oh, aroma, wow. I just his got smell. Chills. I love that. Yeah. Like I, I, I knew I wrote that down and I forgot about that. So yeah, that flower I saw that's called the Sharon flower, that scripture I read about um, it blooming in the desert and the barren places. Well, that's Jesus. That's the Lord. That's what we're after. That's what we're chasing. And when I picked it up, um, you know, I had the ancient of days, like his authentic 
spirit in me and then he's allowing me to grow jesus is the new right the ancient of days is black and white Mm -hmm. jesus is the new and so it was really cool because he's the flower i picked and i forgot about that in the picture that's why i wrote it down and in the song of songs it goes it goes along with this you know and I always think about what, not always, but in the recent months, I've thought about what fragrance do I leave when I'm in a place? Like Mm -hmm. what's the aroma I'm leaving? And is the Lord consuming more of me or am I consuming more of me? And that's Mm -hmm. a battle. Yeah, too. It, totally. There's days I'm not at my best and it's, (laughs) it's me, not the Lord, but this was so cool. This has been on my heart for a like a year at least. And it's, you know, who is this one? She arises out of her, out of her desert clinging to her beloved Jesus. When I awakened you under the apple tree, as you were feasting upon me, I awakened your innermost beings to the travail of birth as you longed for more of me. The travail of birth, just like I was talking about when you go through birth, think about how, if you've been, if you're a mom, how you're longing to meet your child when you Mm -hmm. had, when you've carried them and you're like, what do they look like? Who what are, are they? they? Like? What are they like? You know, that's like travailing. It's the heart of God falling upon you. And you're, tr- you end up longing for more of the Lord, less of the things of this world. And that mm-hmm. only happens when you intercede and you pray and you're face down. And so that goes along to what the Lord's doing this year for me personally, but other people, it says, fasten me upon your heart as a seal of fire. This living consuming flame will seal you as my prisoner of love. My passion is stronger than the chains of death in the grave, which is, fear the world what the world has to offer you and it says um in the grave all consuming as very flashes of fire from the burning heart of god place this fierce unrelenting fire over your entire being rivers of pain and persecution will never extinguish this flame endless floods will be unable to quench this raging fire that burns within you everything will be consumed it will stop at nothing as you yield everything to this furious fire until it won't even seem like you sacrifice anymore um and I told her that, you know, a while back, you know, we're all in our process and it's, it's years of obedience, years of surrender, years of trial and error. Mm-hmm. Um, and it takes time. God can accelerate you. And I believe that he's doing that in this season, this time of like, he's accelerating his believers, but remember the process of sacrifice and quiet times with the Lord, it doesn't go unnoticed. Even when yeah. we feel like it does, there's been so many times I've cried out, like I see nothing. Thanks. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, you know, but it's like this fire that I've literally felt in my hands and my being that it's like, it doesn't matter what happens to me. I know where I'm going. I know his, I I just want his heart. And that happens with your surrender and you getting to Mm -hmm. know him. Like I said, you sit, it says he reveals the secrets to his friends and that's obedience. That's your yes. That's all these things we're saying, but it starts with what are you going to choose? And that's the free will of mankind. We have our choice. We can choose what we're going to choose, but there are outcomes for our choices. There's Mm -hmm. consequences for our choices. And is it going to lead to death or a life? The world offers you life, but it's a temporary fix in the world. And these small victories lead to everlasting life. And so I love that. That's in Song of Songs 8, 5 through 7. It's just so cool because you can plant it in your spirit when you feel like that fire is blown out. That goes with the glow and the light. Mm -hmm. Let it consume you. It's the fire inside of you that that brings the light. Like Mm -hmm. you're not, you're not just like, Oh, Jesus is the the way, the truth and the life, which he is. Mm -hmm. But we say that without going, okay, what does that mean about him inside of me? So you're talking about glowing and growing. That light is actually fire that starts inside of you that actually beams. Then you walk and people are like, what's different? What's different? Yeah. They notice it. Or or like you're talking about the aroma that you leave when you walk in a room. And it all correlates. Like that fire only can come from your pursuit of Jesus. And I promise you won't be disappointed. So, if you're looking at it from a perspective of, okay, is Jesus my vending machine? Did I get this job? Did I, I ask for this? Did you did answer this that? prayer? Yeah. You know, I have so many prayers that are still unanswered or right. still in limbo mm-hmm. to be t- determined, you know? Yeah. And it's like, that's not the point. My pursuit is Jesus, not what he can do for thing. me. And that's what the world says. What can the, what can be done for me, 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 mm-hmm. me? And the Lord's like, go share the good news, love my people. And that's so, right. you know, we're all empowered to do that. That's right. It's just it might seem like other people are further along in the process and that's because they are. And it could be. Their I love that scripture receipt. in Isaiah 61. It talks about like, we're called to go share the good news mm-hmm. to the brokenhearted and like whatever, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. it's a really good section. Yeah. Isaiah 61, if you want to go read it, but yeah. So yeah, yeah that was, that was cool. Now that we've, I know we've been talking for a long, long time, time, but there's so much exciting stuff yeah. and we're just so glad that you're here. We're feeling refreshed and excited for all that the Lord's doing and make sure you're following us over on Instagram, the wildflower podcast. Um, I think we're going to start a thing on Mondays where you can send in your prayer requests. We'll be praying for you. Like we you've talked so much about intercession and prayer and mm-hmm. we want to be praying for you guys as well. And just things that you're walking through and mm-hmm. 
Anyways, we're just excited. And we can close so, in prayer if you want to. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, sure. Let's I'll do pray. It. All right. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for this word um, of the year for 2023. Thank you for Amanda. I thank you for this podcast. Thank you for the heart behind it, Lord. We thank you for your truth, God. And I just, I pray, Lord, that you would bless these words, Father God, that we would steward them the way you've called us to steward them, Lord. And I bless these women and these people that are tuning in and watching, God. I pray that you would bring a supernatural ease to your, their pursuit of you this season, God. I pray that it would be easy for them to pursue you, Lord Jesus, that you would come more alive, Father God, that in their hearts they'd be awakened to your truth truth, Lord, your spirit, your love, Father God, that it would be all consuming and overwhelming, Father. I just thank you for the battle that's already been won. Lord, we talked about battle and bloom, God, but you've already been the victor. We wear that victor's crown, Lord. That's our goal, Father, is to pursue and chase after you, but that's the battle's been won. All we have to do is show up, Father, and I pray that you would give them grace to show up, Lord, and I pray that you would continue to show us how to lead and walk forward in what you have for this season. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.